And I, I always finish before, but uh, so I, I took her example, and she started with an introduction of the university, so I also start with an introduction. <coughs> Uh, and uh, basically, I'll, I'll talk uh, very briefly about what we are doing with computer vision at the university, but in two, two aspects, actually, like this uh, iceberg. Just what technology of the university came out into, into industry and basically people are, are using. So you may be using it either uh, without, with or without your knowledge. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, so we have several faculty members that deal with uh, imaging, uh, and imaging, like computer, computer vision, image processing, computer graphics. Part of these people also do learning. There's a lot of uh, overlap uh, between, uh, at least three overlap between this group and, and, and machine learning. Uh, there are some companies that uh, I'll actually I'll talk about all these three. I'll, I'll start with uh, the first two. And Mo Mobileye. Mobileye is the, the most famous company that uh, started the university, was founded by uh, Amnon uh, Shashua. And, and, and basically, uh, what the company does is, is a chip uh, that has a full uh, computer vision capability uh, for uh, driver assistance. So there's a camera on your... A anyone has mobile in his car here? Only two people here have mobile. Well, in Israel, it's marketed uh, well. You probably don't... There are two versions. One is add-on system that you can buy after you uh, buy your car. And one is that you get built in in the car. Now you must be very wealthy to get it in your car because it's sold in BMWs and other types of cars, but <coughs> the add-on is uh, more economical. And, uh, and anyway, current features that I have are uh, lane departure warning, forward collision warning, pedestrian detection, uh, there are much more features, but uh, these are very nice features that are in, the, in, in most of, of the system. Uh, and there's one single camera on the uh, behind the, the mirror. It's a tiny system, looks looks on the road, uh, and, and works. It was founded uh, in 1999 by Shashua. Currently, it has 300 employees, uh, and uh, and basically, this is the the system. This is a U.S. quarter. Uh, and uh, there is a chip on the right. There is a system. If you do a standalone system, it's mounted on a card, uh, PCB board, and uh, there is a display on a standalone system. Uh, and basically, all computer vision is done here in this uh, in this chip. This is an example of. Uh, it's not how the system works, but. What the system do, can do, it can detect uh, cars, trucks, compute the distance. Remember, there's only one camera. Compute the distance to the cars. Compute who is in your lane, who is not in your lane, who is in a collision course, who is not in a collision course. Uh, and, and I learned from Amnon what, uh, what reliability you need from a commercial system. If the system was 99.99% correct, it means that it will fail every two minutes. It should not fail within days. So uh, think about how many frames we have per day, and it should be correct in every frame. So uh, when you want to do something reliable for market, uh, you must get reliability, which is much, much higher than whatever we talk about computer in computer vision. So. Uh, very close to 100 uh, percent. This is how the system works. So this is the the alarm. I turned off the speaker, but there is an al audible alarm as well. It, it tells you that uh, uh, when you when you kind of uh, go uh, move your lane, uh, depart from your lane left or right, or you get too close, then you come to collision here, uh, etc. And, and he, as you saw, it works uh, under uh, all, all conditions. It starts now to be in uh, in a model of uh, 2012 in Opel, in Ford, 2012, uh, BMW. It started in 2011. So it's now starting to get in, in, into all cars. And uh <coughs> basically, I guess the market value of the company now is something towards $1 billion. So it's numbers that... I, I don't think there's any computer vision, pure computer vision company that got to this level of uh, 
commercial uh, success. A another company is, is a company Humanize that I founded here again at the same time with uh, Mobili, much less successful. And basically, the, the, the company was looking for the way <coughs> uh, for its direction for many years until last year, total, uh, actually 2010, uh, the stereo panorama that it does started to appear in all Sony cameras, then Sony Ericsson cell phones, then Samsung cameras. Uh, and uh, <coughs> and if you bought recently a Sony camera, you you have this technology inside. <coughs> what it does, it, it basically creates mosaicing. But uh, other than <coughs> not, not create several mosaics from every image, but each mosaic is taken from different location on an image because the camera is moving when it's captured the image. We have different mosaics, each having different viewing direction giving us 3D system and actually we can do 3D uh, printing using lenticular prints and and, uh, and what happens is this is the input image you take a camera and, and, and you just look around the room this is the input and you create several panoramic images as you see on the, on the bottom so and this gives you a three-dimensional view so all you need, you take the camera, scan the scene, and you process it, and, and you get the 3D. And uh, the Sony camera has working very well because the way to get this 3D, the way you watch it is you take the camera and you rotate it, and the view changes as you rotate it. So it's if you are holding the 3D object in in, in your hand. And the the third company is what I'll talk about here is, is talking about the video synopsis and interesting. I, I made <coughs> a presentation in, in one of the conferences and I realized that video synopsis indexing is, is the wrong thing. Uh, there is many buzzwords that I failed to use and <coughs> the buzzword, using the buzzword the video data mining using temporal information fusion. So <coughs> data mining information fusion are buzzwords that I use in the trade uh, which uh, I missed but so I still keep my old title, but uh, people who want to tie it to existing buzzwords are data mining and temporal information fusion. Uh, so as I mentioned, it was uh, done at the university and the technology uh, transferred to a company that now is trying to, to commercialize it. Uh, <coughs> and the system basically, the problem to overcome is the problem of the uh, increasing number of cameras. So uh, people say we had 11 million in 2008. We expect to have 40 million uh, surveillance cameras in 2013. The increase of sale is predicted at 30% every year. But this is estimate is much lower than the correct one because Axis, one of the companies, the company that make this camera here, predict this quarter. They reported they have 45% increase in sale in one quarter. So I don't know how 45% increase in one quarter goes to 30% increase a year, but uh, it's booming. And everyone puts cameras everywhere, and uh, they're all recording 24 hours a day. Store it cheap, <coughs> so you can record all the video. You can keep it, and no one knows what to do with this video. Basically, the video is there, being captured, being recorded, no one ever look, looks at the video. So some examples are, uh, famous examples from many years ago are in the first 9-11. So this is Muhammad Atta before boarding one of his planes in 9-11, he was captured. Uh, it took about two weeks to sift through the video everywhere to find this video. And this is another uh, bombing in a uh, Cologne train in Cologne train station. Again, it took, after the event, it took several weeks uh, to find the video describing the terrorists coming with the bomb. This terrorist uh, fled to, uh, I think, to Lebanon afterwards. So if it would make two, two weeks or two hours to find this, you may catch them before they leave the country. Uh, and, uh, and the problem is that you have so much video, so whenever something happens, 
you have to look at um, this is a more recent one. This is from last year, uh, from uh, Dubai. Uh, so thousands of people, or oh, hundreds of people, sit for many hours in the archive and try to look and uh, and watch uh, these videos to find this. And it takes practically in all events, if you count how long it takes from the time of the event to the time the videos were found, it takes weeks. So to to find a video in a matter of weeks, it's un unacceptable. So uh, the first obvious solution coming is computer vision. Let's not rely on people looking on the video. We have computer vision. Let's have computer vision do the work. And computer vision for analyzing surveillance videos for video analytics. And we're trying to understand events. Basically, that is, let's first see what events are interesting in video. Left luggage uh, in airport, for example, or street fights in safe city environments. Or recognized terrorists, whenever we see Osama bin Laden, it's not relevant anymore, but if we see him in one airport, we should realize that and catch him. Uh, and, and in general, we'd like to create a symbolic representation. We take a video, turn it into a symbolic representation, as Tani mentioned before, and, and we want to learn this from this. We want to search symbolic representation, we want to learn from symbolic representation, and of course, we want to provide real time alarm. The problem is that there's a long way to go until computer vision works in this area. Uh, so uh, I think Rita mentioned most of the problem I know of. It's if you learn from one point of view, you may fail to work from another point of view. So basically it means that you have to do specific learning for any can camera you, you install. Think about these all these tens of millions of cameras to do learning for every Forget it, it's impossible. Uh, uh <coughs> you have all the changes of occlusions, uh, lighting changes, so it's very difficult. And uh, and this is why uh, uh, the uh, major video analytics companies are in big trouble. No, no one buys their phones. Uh, but uh, n not only this. Even turning it into symbolic representation is is difficult. For example, the vocabulary to represent visual events is very poor. Look about color. How many colors we have and how many words we have to describe color? We have many more colors than words to describe color. So even color, we have not enough words to describe color. We, we don't have enough words to describe activity accurately. And so, so kind of taking visual appearances and visual activities and colors to take them into symbols kills the, the, the effect in it. So people are perfectly good in, in taking visual activity, identify behavior, color. If you do something in a way that you hesitate or something, people will immediately see that. I don't think any machine vision system will be able to identify that. Not yet. Uh, then there is this problem between false alarm and misses. So if you don't want any false alarms, you tune it and then you have misses all the time. Or you don't have any misses, then you have always false alarms. So you can never really balance between misses and false alarms. So, so basically the video analytic business today is has way to go before it's going to succeed. Then, and uh, Object Video, which is the, one of the biggest, basically decided they cannot make money out of video surveillance, and they started to sue all the other companies. <laughs> it's very interesting. They have a patent on tripwire. Tripwire yeah. is, is very interesting. Tripwire is you have a you have a line, and so whenever an object moves from one side of the line to the other side of the line, this is an event, and they somehow managed to get a patent on this. Now, I don't think it will stand in court in any way. I mean, people were doing this all the time, but, but they have a patent on that. So they start to sue everyone on earth for violating the tripwire patent. So they think they'll have more money by lawsuits than by doing video surveillance. Uh, hmm? Analytics. Hmm? Analytics. Yeah. That's all companies. Uh -huh. Uh, 
Okay. So, so, so what, what we turn on? Well, we say computer vision works, but it has still a long way to go before being useful. So let's say, what can be useful right now? Well, what can be useful right now? That's computer graphics. Computer graphics, we just look at it. We don't have to make any decision. We just show to people. And, and then the early work by Michal Irani many years ago was take, take a video, and this is the way uh, she uh, summarized uh, about 30 seconds of video. So she took all the objects that appear in this 30 seconds, pasted them over one, one image. This we can see a, a short activity here, like uh, some, uh, we see like two, two players uh, playing, and some referee on the side. So, uh, so this is summer. This is uh, using. Uh, this is actually Michal Irani's picture. But following this, we had our picture of our own. So you can see very brief activities. You can do that. But the, when you put everything in a station still image, you have a problem. First, in a still image, you can summarize only a very short uh, video, and we know that surveillance video are based practically infinite. And uh, and also you you miss activity. You see some the shadow of one of the dogs. <laughs> well, I mean, you assume that you know how to uh, segment objects. <coughs> uh, so we we examine this work and basically we show not the synopsis mosaic but synopsis video. So we take a very long video and summarize a short video and the principle is very easy. And you can understand why it will be difficult for me to talk about this for 50 minutes, because I'll describe it in 10 seconds. We take this, this is the input video, it's a sequence of frames, this is the time axis, a long time, we have objects, different objects appear in different time, and the way we summarize it is just take different objects that appear different times, show them together. So basically we can show all the objects in the video in a short time. And this basically, I ended my talk here. But I'll show some examples. So how is video looking uh, in this event? So these are two examples of, of video we took of the, the, the web. Uh, so this is an original video. And then we summarize this video into a much shorter video in the video on the right. Uh, and actually, it, it's interesting, I gave this talk one time in, in Bangalore, and the people in Bangalore look at this and say, but this is how Bangalore airport looks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were right. Uh, but this is not how this billiard club <laughs> looks anyway, because this is what's called French billiard. If, if you notice, there's no pockets here, and there's one player. So here we see simultaneous players around. So we know they all come from different games, uh, or from different times. But uh, uh, okay. So, so, so what do we basically do? First, we detect moving objects. Uh, we assume, in our case, we did background, background subtraction. Uh, so we, we have every object is a 3D uh, volume and x, y in the image, and t is time, uh, and uh, <coughs> and it looks like, like a pipe, like a snake, whatever. So there is a, a, a sign of an object. This represents the motion of the object in time. And this is a long time. We make to make this long time short. So we need to take this object and, and pack them in time. So basically, we play Tetris, if any of you remember this old game. And uh, we pack the object from a long time into a much shorter time, and we create <coughs> we create uh, a shorter version where the objects are much. Mm -hmm. I, I, look at this object. Uh, so this object, the length of this object is is longer than this uh, time that we allocated. So, oh. so we had the. Uh, to break it into two. We'll talk about more about this. What's very interesting about here is that while we see all the objects, we lose something very important. We lose causality. We lose ca causality because we can reverse the object of event. Uh, if I shoot someone and he falls down, 
he may fall down in the synopsis and my shooting will appear later. So, Kazal did not, but we must lose something. We cannot. But this is something quite critical hmm? for analysis of the video. I mean, I really want. Causality is something that I, it's the last thing I want to lose. No. No. The part? No. 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 Way <laughs> that, is, um, that if you play a movie backwards, you know exactly one that is backwards, such as uh, in favor of your argument. But uh, even if you see, you know immediately what, what is going on. And basically, so the question is really what, how, do I, how are you doing it? I mean, uh, then you can go back. Uh, of course, if oh. I can know the causes or know what's important before I I what actually happens, it's very nice. It is an outline in the course of law. Uh, then uh, causality is very important, right? <laughs> but to get an impression, um, you, you don't worry too much about uh, time at all. Okay, that's and, a, and actually, that's actually, that's actually that's we, very we try, we try, we try to show <coughs> different variations. Uh, and we found out that really changing the time, meaning losing causality, does not, people you don't care about. If you move object in space, for example, if I walked here in the summary, I put you walking there, it kills you, you'll be way off. Yes. But, so moving in space, pe people... Well, continuity in space is more important than causality. Exactly, yes. exactly. So, so, so moving in space <coughs> is, 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 is okay, really... Let's talk about, uh, predictability or causality in some sense mm -hmm. is really the essence of some other parts of yeah. this uh, meeting that come back to okay. who cares about relativity. <coughs> Not relativity, it's really <coughs> the ability to use it as a in court or, or, or in, a, in, in any type of causal analysis. Didn't you create a thing that never happened? Hmm? Didn't you also create a thing that never actually happened? Because of the interaction between both uh, objects, of course we create something that never happened, because we create new things. Like, I, I, I have a scene here that I have five objects. In never, in, or, or one, two, three, five, six objects. In this scene, you never see more than two objects simultaneously. So of course you create something that never happened. Right, so yeah. It's not just that you lose causality, you also enrich your, your, your video. Well, it's like, it's assume that you want to drink, uh, so instead of drinking Coke, you drink Coke concentrate. Okay, so it's, so it's not Coke, it's a concentrate. You, it's different, taste yeah. differently. It's, it's something that you, you want Coke, you don't want to concentrate, and this is a concentrate. But if you don't have time, <laughs> you, you get the concentrate. Maybe I'm not uh, If you're looking at, at a particular object, then you have an analogy, I can understand it. But if you're looking at a scene, interaction between objects, right? No, no, you lose, you're right, you're right. Now, it, it, one of the interesting things here, and, and uh, Rita mentioned this, how do you identify that object interact? For example, you can have seen that object don't interact with each other. In this case, we don't care about losing causality because there's no causality. But when, when object interact, assume that two people, they come, they talk, they shake hands, and then continue. Maybe you say, well, when people interact, I want to detect this interaction, and maybe when I shift time, I want to shift them together. I want to put the constraints that object in the interact, I don't want to lose causality, and obviously don't interact, I don't care. Uh, how easy it is to f find interactions? Not easy. The, the last work I found about finding interaction really tracks the eye motion of people and said, if I'm looking at you and you are looking at me and then we are shaking our heads, uh, then we are interacting. It's, it's very difficult to, to detect interaction. Right, so that's Okay. Well, what I did mention here, about that I'll mention later, is when we do do things well, one of the things, what do we do with, I don't call it collision, I call it overlap, okay? Because collision is in the world. In my case, there's no collision. I, when I put objects, they, they overlap. So when I put objects on top of each other, I create confusion. It's making, but when I have, I don't think I'll create any confusion when I put roads in the intersection and they'll cross each other. 
no, we know we know that in real life they don't collide, right? So the fact that they cross each other interaction will enable me to show this uh, intersection in much less time without causing any confusion because I know that in real life they don't go in the they don't collide. Yeah. I wasn't trying to answer anything. I was just, but what we're trying to do, take a long video, take a day, show it in a minute. Uh, That's it. Let, let's start just to summarize. I think there is an issue, an interesting challenge, how to, to do a causality preserving video synopsis. I think this is an interesting because uh, it, it certainly requires some more thinking. Why, why, in a way, why do people create a video? Yeah. In the process of doing that, learn much more additional information. For example, you know that the different tracks are different objects, and you recognize them. So why not to make the out final output, not a video, but say an interactive... I try, I try to answer... Web, uh, kind of, uh, I, I try to answer this here. So why video? Because I want people to look at it. Because automatically, I, I cannot do any much automatically. No, and a video, but instead of a fixed length, Oh, oh, of course not a fixed list. I didn't finish no, my talk. No. I didn't finish my talk yet. Okay, okay, no. I didn't finish my talk. It's not a fixed list, <laughs> but a video. Okay? No, you, you invited those interruptions because so it's not <laughs> enough to say. But uh, okay, go on, <laughs> and, and we'll continue. To okay, so, so we have... Uh, one, one example here, this is uh, like students going to the, have drinks. So if you say student came from the left, student came from the right, then this... Uh, student come from the left. These are the trajectories. What is the summary? How can I summarize this? So basically I can move them in time, basically nest these two one inside the other, and create a new video that n never happened. But, but again, we see all the activities in the original video, and uh, this is the, the, the new video, and, and we don't lose anything. And since it didn't interact, we don't care because there was no causality. Have you prevent overlap? Hmm? I, since I have the object in time, I, I know when they overlap. So I, when I minimize the time, I, I the cost function that I say, well... You completely con destroy the continuity of time. That's the Okay. But it creates a very powerful way to detect things Absolutely. in lab, lab, lab video. Okay, so what I describe now is if you have different objects at different time, I shift them in time, show them simultaneously. Sometimes I have an object that happens for a long time, mm -hmm. and longer than my summary. In this case, I, I just will just break them, and uh, the nicest example is, is this uh, Lena, uh, and uh, Lena's father gave me this video because she wanted Lena to be as famous as the original Lena, <laughs> and uh, he's Michael Cohen from Microsoft, uh, and of course, a shorter summary of this is this one. So you can see everything, all of Lena's activities in one third of the time and and actually you know this is false but it doesn't fool us right we know that we have one girl here we know that it happened at different times and and, and even though we lose causality and everything bad we said but it's very clear for us what happens here uh, we, we can I was doing mosaic a lot of times so we can always do mosaic so we can take this image this is the Michal Irani's uh, uh, synopsis mosaic, but we are doing video, so, so this is our uh, video uh, synopsis when something happened several times. Okay, so, so we have uh, a video, uh <coughs> and we would like uh, to show uh, a summary of the video. Uh, uh, so this is a, a summary of the video on the left. So when you have the summary, we have objects that came from different times. So this, for example, a, a frame, we have three objects. How do we know they came from different times? We'll just look at the shadows. From this shadow, we know that it came either early in the morning or evening. This means no shadow, or very cloud. So this shadow is underneath. We know it was around noon. So we know the object is <coughs> a different time. We know there's no causality. We know that. Is it right to put some, maybe a little clock on each uh, object? If I really look at it, I want to see. 
to the yeah, yeah, yeah. There are all these options. You can turn clocks on and off and this and and anyway, so what you can say, you can select an object. And of course, you know the object. You can go back to the original video. You know every object, you know the time it was captured. So you can go to the, the and play back. Uh, so you see this is cloudy. You go this cart. The cart is in the morning, I guess. And you see with this big shadow. And, uh, and if you want uh, uh, the car, you, you, you go to the car and, and get the car. So basically, this... Uh, synopsis, the summary is basically an index. It's like when you look at the book, instead of reading the book, you look at the index at the back of the book. Of course, you cannot read the book from the index, but from the index, you can go back and find the interesting object you want inside the book, and then you read. So, this is more like an index to the video than actually watching. It doesn't replace watching the video. If something is interesting, you can go back and, and, and see. Uh, the video and, and and it's interesting that once we start playing with this other friends I, I must use you I must use your software so he took uh, for the flip camera took two hours video of his backyard and gave me to summarize so what are you looking for so this is the summary said whenever I come back to work sometime I see some uh, dog litter on my lawn and I want to find the dog that does it so I uh, so he gave me this two, two hours and we did we didn't find, see, there's a lot of dog owners walking with the dogs there, but we didn't find, no one was actually uh, doing it. So we had to wait for another day. Uh, but <coughs> basically, I mean, it's not only security, it's much more what's called curiosity. Once you can look at a very long video, before two hours, you never watch two hours. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very boring video. Uh, uh, some people walking with the lawn, some people walking with their uh, old people walking with their Filipinos care givers. So uh, very boring. But 20 seconds, that's okay. So then you can have all the videos. Some, some people have videos around the house. Some don't have because it's not the time. But now after they have 20 seconds, well, we can put cameras and we'll see what happens about my house. Okay. So this is uh, how much time it takes. Always saying text to generate. So basically, the all all the time it takes, it takes to track the objects. So it's as long as it takes to track the object. Once you have an object, the the Tetris game is it's <coughs> zero effort because you don't look at pixels. You look at object, then you have don't have much effort. So uh, uh, it's as much as uh, it takes to track the video. But it, it's very interesting that. What happens in installations? If, if you put an installation, uh, they have a lot of cameras. What they don't have, they don't have people to watch the cameras. Mm -hmm. So assume that you have thousands. Look at Bangalore Airport. My guess, 3,000 cameras. My guess, two people watching the video. Maybe five, okay? But I'm sure not more than 10. Uh, so the issue is, is not the number of cameras. It's the people who are watching the video. So uh, if you take all the video in real time and start to detect object, summarize, and this, most of this video will never be uh, observed. So the, the, the trick is basically try to do it very fast. So if I want to see this video yesterday or this morning at 10 o'clock, only when you are asking a request, only then start to summarize. But then it means that you have to summarize very quickly because you are not going to wait two hours for a request for summary. So if you can summarize two hours in one minute and show a one minute summary of these two hours, that's okay. If it takes you two hours, to so, so one of the ideas is basically try to do it not in real time, but hundred times real time or something, so that you can really summarize hours in minute, and you don't have to pre -course. Right now, when object detection and training, it, it happened in real time. So happening in real time means one hour takes, one hour widow is done in one hour of processing. It means that you have to take all the hundreds or thousands of cameras and process them all the time. You need a room full of PCs doing all these uh, detection and tracking and cataloging and all this. And then you use only a fraction of these for viewing. So if you can do it very fast, not real time, but 100 times real time, then you don't really need to waste 
processing time on cameras that you're never going to watch. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so until now, basically, there was no computer vision in what I described. Uh, it was, well, there was maybe, we say object segmentation is computer vision, but it's easy computer vision. It's computer vision that was so long time ago. Uh, so when we look at summary, this is an example of summary of a gate. Some more cars are coming in, coming out. In order to be to make it allow, make be shorter, we must allow overlap, especially in this area of the gate, because everyone goes through the gate. If you don't allow overlap in the gate, you don't get any summary. And it, it, it's chaotic, so you see there's overlap between these cars. How can we make it look nicer? Look nicer, I mean that basically people will look at it and will be able to extract more useful information than, than before. You see here, all the cars are on top. So we can avoid it. We can avoid overlap, but if we avoid completely the overlap, we get very long. So one of the things is, is to look at objects that we care about. Uh, for example, assume that we take uh, the video and we decide, let's cluster it. So in this case, we, took, we cluster it on two clusters based on shape. So we get based on shape, so we have the big object and the small object. Uh, now, sometimes you see some people here, uh, because you now computer vision is not the perfect, maybe the segmentation of these people uh, wasn't the perfect. So we, we, we got large object, and, and then we can say, well, okay, we want to see only the large object, we want to see only the, the small object. It's interesting that no car is small object, but some people are considered large objects. Uh, so we can just, let's look at fewer objects. Let's don't look at objects we don't care about. Now let's look at the car. Uh, so we have the car, and now we try to cluster it uh, based on motion. Motion is uh, similar to what Rita described. We have uh, uh, direction of motion of the, of the uh, trajectory of the camera. And we did, the way we did clustering was just kind of spec spec clustering on the, uh, the schema, and then basically describe that to four classes. And then automatically we get four classes. Basically these are vehicles that go to the right, these that enter and, and go to this direction, these are all the cars that go out, uh, these are cars that come in. So, so we have uh, we've clustered, and then we can decide do we care about uh, cars that go right on the road outside? Do we care about uh, cars that come in? Do we care about the cars that come out? And, and then we basically do this, and, and this is done, and this computer vision is done by clustering. I mean, I don't need, if I really wanted in advance to train for car coming in, I had to do calibration of this camera, which only for this camera here, we did clustering. Spectral clustering, we don't know anything, just four classes. So these are clusters of what objects? The space time chunks of the video? Hmm? No, no, on the objects. So we have objects. Every object is a, is a so tube. An object is a tube. Tube in space time. Right. So it's a three dimensional tube that has shape. This was my previous clustering, and now I'm looking at the, at the direction moving right, moving left. Is the time working? Hmm? Is the time working? I'll, I'll show what, what the. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, so basically, we were users. So one mentioned it. Why do we show video? We can show more interactive. So this is an interactive showing. So we show show the summary. So well, okay, take me two classes based on shape. Okay, I decide select the shape of the cars, cluster me based on uh, direction. I thought this. I care about cars that uh, that, that they enter. That you go, and then you can really dig through the object that you see uh, based on uh, on uh, shape, on motion, etc. Uh, so, uh, so what we have about these uh, 3D tubes, so they have uh, basically uh, <coughs> uh, we have appearance feature and we have uh, a motion uh, uh, motion features and uh, the appearance features is like we randomly select 200 shift features inside every tube, and the motion features is a smooth trajectory of the center of the tube. 
So basically, yeah, every object is a set of uh, six features and a sequence of uh, locations of the center of uh, of the tube. And how we uh, you ask how we compute the appearance features was just uh, symmetric distance between the six features of uh, of two uh, two tubes. This is the, the, the shape. Uh, distance and uh <coughs> and uh <coughs> and actually if we did by appearance before and if we don't do uh two clusters two clusters separated between cars and people if we do four clusters uh that then we, we say we, we can have uh, uh this is appearance uh I don't know if you can identify clear what's in inside, but in every cluster. Uh, but what's interesting is that if we, d we did some cluster appearance, one cluster was this, this is the gate, and another cluster uh, was here, this is the trees that are moving. Because trees are moving and they're object, and the gate is going up and down, and it's an object. So we can do some clusters. So these these clusters, we don't cannot characterize what they are, but this cluster, we know that we don't care about these clusters, so we can say, well, take all the motion of the gate, or take all the movement of the trees, throw them away, we don't care about them. So there's something that the operator can uh, uh, can play. Now about about the motion, trajectory similarity, this was Stalin was uh, uh, asking about. So, so basically what we do, we take if this is a trajectory, we try to to, uh, to find the translation of the trajectory so that the area between the two trajectories uh, is uh, is uh, is minimized and uh, and we, we we basically shift them in uh, in uh, both space and in time. We don't do uh, time warping. So if one is faster than the other, or in in all case, if it's faster you than you take time too seriously here, considering. Hmm? Well, I I it well if you measure in our case, what is if you have cars, and if you have people, uh, then what's distinguished with them is the speed. Cars move faster. So if I will not. Uh, I will find cars being similar to pedestrian if I will uh, speed is something that I don't care. I think speed is important. The time you move, if you came at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, may be less important than if you are driving 80 kilometers per hour or 3 kilometers per hour. So this is interesting. Okay, and then we said that we expect plus by motion. Uh, okay. So, so one thing is, uh, in order to create uh, some kind of uh, uniform uh, synopsis, one of the, or not uniform, uh, coherent one that is easy for us to watch, is we found that it's better first to cluster two objects based on motion and then to uh, to display them. For example, if we look like cars, we have two clusters uh, in, in, in a car, so this is spectral cluster and this is the affinity matrix and these are the two, two clusters. So one cluster is, uh, this basically is uh, uh, a motion, it means we move from uh, left to right and here we move from uh, right to left. And, and, and these clustering motion take all the left to right in one cluster, on the right to left on another cluster. So if we, we don't try uh, to combine them, but we do them separately, we get a more uh, coherent one. So this, for example, is if we play uh, the motion from right to left okay. first, and then follow from, let's see, what's the first? Well, I forgot. One of them right to left, one of them left to right. And here, when we allow them to overlap. So in, in this case, we get very high penalty for, uh, for overlap. So we have the right to left and the left to right separately. Here, we allow overlap. So we see them on the road, 
they overlap with each other. It depending on the user, if he cares to see each color separately or if this overlap doesn't bother the, the user, it can mark how much energy, how much cost function you want to give for overlap. And when overlap is uh, given a lot of penalty, you get this. When overlap is not given a lot of penalty, you get this summary. Uh, anyway, so what's interesting about this application is one of the biggest training supervised classifiers. When we have supervised classifiers, sometimes we need many examples, and uh, many means many millions of examples, and to manually train every example may be very difficult, so what we can do is we can, we can cluster objects together, we can classify only one or two objects manually, uh, we can look at the resulting cluster using synopsis. If an object is classified incorrectly by the clustering, we can manually, we can easily see this incorrect object and we can take him out manually. So this is, this synopsis allows us to inspect tens and hundreds of objects simultaneously and find the outliers instead of actually going one after one after one after one for a long time. So it helps us uh, kind of uh, trade classifiers. Uh, and even as we have video analytics, assuming we know we want to recognize cars. Uh, so, well, we identify 1,000 cars during the day. Show me the cars, you see car one, car two, car three, every car takes 10 seconds, 10 seconds times 1,000, you get 10,000 seconds, forget it, it's a long time. But if you take all the 1,000 cars and you show them simultaneously, like, one after the other. You can show all of them instead of three hours in three minutes, and then much easier to see uh, the results of uh, video analytics. And of course, when one result is wrong, when one car is interesting, you're looking for the fire truck, or you're looking for a green car, you're looking for a person wearing a tennis uh, uh, kind of dress. Uh, it's very easy for a human to recognize, even when you see it among other objects. Okay, so I finished my talk and this is the synopsis of my talk. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, time, but uh, I think that uh, this type of the issue of uh, video synopsis is actually raising uh, many other interesting challenges and questions that I want to try to summarize them. Uh, actually, some of it is for you, Eric. So, uh, and uh, for example, the cognitive aspect of this synopsis is really interesting for, for, for a brain, from a brain science perspective. And do we, does this correspond to our memory of events? Obviously not. Of course, yes. <laughs> and actually, when I showed it, there was a photographer, and he told me, like he had in memories of a room. So he remember several activities happened in the room, but he remember one, two, three. He does not remember the order. So in uh, our memory, I don't know, maybe if you're certain about it, I'm not In our memory, but, uh, no, no, I'm not certain about no, no, anything. I, I think our I'm memory plays a very funny tricks, and, and, and I think that some time older... Look, I have a question. Important. You remember some talks that happened in this room, right? Try to summarize your video, the, this talk, what will happen. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking. You remember some talk happened in this room. Can you order them by time? I'm sure it would be very difficult for you. I, okay, as you may know, I mean, my work is, is, is very strongly uh, on time in, in some sense. I mean, the notion of past and future and causality is essential to what I think is our cognitive processing. Uh, but it's, I think it's raising interesting issues. I mean, uh, first of all, uh, can we really improve this line of algor algorithms to include causality? I think it's an interesting question. And, uh, and what, what would be a good memory of good really summary of events which really Correspond to our, our cognitive uh, memory of things, which will allow us maybe to better search and better understand. So it's not only looking nicer, but really better interpretable. And uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm not answering any question. Just want to raise the issue. It's, 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 it's a challenge. So to me, as a uh, brain scientist, let's say it's a very interesting uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me that you are uh, really troubled by the loss of totality, and I would argue that the loss of totality is actually uh, a feature rather than. Uh, oh, and you're not the only one. People